He also later told me, um, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but he told me that there's two kinds of otaku. He wants only one kind of otaku. I'll, I'll let you think about that. Two kinds of otaku, and there's one he's looking for. So this is um, an, a rather outdated map of changes that are happening in Akihabara. This is um, Akihabara Station, JR Station. It's one of the oldest stations on the um, Tokyo Metro line. Uh, and um, let's see. The original shrine, Akiba Shrine, which is uh, what the area is named after. It's kind of a fire break, a fire god, located here. It's where the area gets its name from. This is the redevelopment zone here. This is Chio Street. This is Showa Street. This is where all of the um, really risque stuff used to be. Prostitutes, brothels, massage, stuff like that. It was all on this side of the station. If you look at it now, what you see is a lot of big buildings. UDX building here, the Daibiru, where Asotaro gave his first speech about Japanese pop culture. Over here is Tokyo Times Tower, Fujisoft building, Yorubashi camera, et cetera, et cetera. And actually now, at this point, there's more development. There's actually um, some spires over here. This entire side of the station is being rebuilt right across from the um, Radio Kaikon. Over here, which is on the other side of the street, um, so this is way into otaku territory right now. It's also being developed, and so on. So it's pushing farther and farther across the street. There's a reason for this. Um, there was a cap put on um, the height of buildings in Akihabara, kind of a, a slapdash amendment that was supposed to stop the overdevelopment of the area. And so people in Akihabara wanted to kind of get the development in before the, the law went into effect. The effect of that was people were building like like madmen, right? And so the land price went up about 20% in one year. So you've got older buildings here that are being condemned one after the other and being replaced by these large, glassy, see-through structures, something like Shibuya or Roppongi. All over, everywhere you look, you'll see this. I encourage you to go down to Akihabara and just check it out for yourself. It's really amazing how, um, how fast it's changing. Okay, so how does this impact the local street culture? Well, the more the media came to Akihabara, the stranger the performances became, because they had to be strange, strange to get on the, the TV, and they had to perform otakuness, right? So they were coming there for two reasons. One was to be famous, one was to be part of a group. The people who wanted to be famous started doing stranger and stranger things, sometimes targeting a subculture audience, sometimes targeting a mainstream audience. I'll give you an example. These are the um, Haruhi dancers. For those of you who don't recognize them, they're wearing masks after all. These uh, young men, most of them were day workers, day laborers, so um, not wealthy men. Um, they would wear girls' costumes, usually Haruhi or maid costumes, and they would dance on the main street of Akihabara, right in front of Don Quixote. So right on the main street. And people were complaining that um, they couldn't get through the street. People were coming to see the Haruhi dancers instead of, you know, shopping. So the local merchants and the people who owned this, uh, who owned the building, started saying, "Well, they're a nuisance, a public disturbance." And the police started coming and chasing them away a little bit more, a little bit more. This wasn't really a big deal, though. It was more kind of like a egg on the face of the local police, but they weren't hurting anybody. They were just running around, changing, changing clothes and stuff like that in the bathrooms and doing whatever made them happy, kind of this bohemian paradise. This is really where things start to get weird. This is Salmo de Asuka, who is a, a self-proclaimed sexy idol. I know Asuka, she's not a very sexy idol. She's a little bit older than she claims. She claims to be about, in, a, in her 20s, she's actually in her 30s, in her mid-30s. But Asuka um, wants to be famous, right? And so she went to Akihabara and she started doing low-angle photography to use her vocabulary with the local cameraman. And this, sure enough, did make her famous. She now makes appearances here in Shinjuku at Loft Plus One, for those of you who know that area. It's a small little uh, club area where they do all-night talk events. She does appearances there. So it did, in, in fact, get her famous. It also got her arrested in uh, May 2008. <laughs> And so the police got a little bit angry, right? Notice, notably, they got angry. Um, I mean, there was, play, there was TV shows like Minemoto, which were saying, ah, Akihabara is out of control. I mean, I go down there, I see girls in short skirts, I see guys cross-dressing. What is going on? So there was all this outrage on the variety shows and on the, uh, the wide shows. And so the police started doing what they do best, 
walking down the street, looking kind of buff, going, what's up? I see you over there in your Hadahi costume. And all the people in the Hadahi costumes were like, no. It's, it's, it's comical, really, because of course, the either side knows who's responsible for what's going on, but it's kind of like a game of cat and mouse. It's like Lupin Sansei running away from Zenigata, right? We all know what's going on, but you just can't catch that Lupin. You can't catch him. It was more like um, a way to uh, show they were doing their job. However, inside of this, they slipped in a little twist, a little twist. Kind of like the Patriot Act, you know, in the United States. It seems like a good idea, protect liberty, you know, be an American. A little twist in there. That twist is called, anybody I don't like who carries a bag, I search. And so they started doing this uh, pretty frequently, actually. And they would stop anybody who they thought looked suspicious, which is completely their judgment. This is illegal, of course, in any country, in Japan as well. But they said they had um, just cause to search these bags, because it could be they were shoplifting. The local store owners said that they're shoplifters in Akihabara, and it could be that guy who has that big designer bag and an anime shirt. Also, he has an anime shirt and a big designer bag and kind of smelly, he's by himself. I don't trust this guy. And so the police started shaking him down. And anybody who was carrying a costume also, they would go looking for those people. And so slowly, this kind of street culture, plebeian culture, was pushed out of Akihabara. At the same time, it was sold on the redevelopment side of Akihabara. So just days after Asuka was arrested, we're talking about, um, about May 1st, May 2nd, that she was arrested. The 4th, they have Akiba Otaku Festival in the UDX building. This is the classic example of zooification, right? You can't control them on the streets, so let's put them into cages and let's domesticate them. What does it say here? It says, no dancing wildly. You can dance, but don't dance wildly. No cross-dressing. Thank you, sir. We're straight in this building. So I mean, all, all these different kind of injunctions against the plebeian culture. It's, it's very interesting that if you look down this list, what you see is it says, come here, buy goods, you know, do what we want you to do, walk in line, get your hand shook by the idol, and leave. And we want, also, we want tourists to come down here, so you know, behave yourself. You can wave your hand. But don't jump. Do not jump. <laughs> you can wave your hand, but God forbid you do otage. Don't you start busting moves up here. None of that, right? <laughs> so really, it's an, it's an interesting thing going on here. And this is exactly what um, Kobayashi was talking about. To return to my earlier point, Kobayashi said that there's two kinds of otaku in Akihabara. One is the good kind. The other is the bad kind. Predictable. The good kind is the kind that goes shopping. They're quiet. They don't bother anybody. They're just kind of walking around. We leave people alone. I like these guys, right? Is what he says. The bad otaku. These are the ones you got to watch out for. They're the ones who come down here. They don't have any money. They're just kind of on the streets. They bring like, big bottles of water. They're pouring over their heads. They're drinking beer on the street. These guys are crazy. They're wild, right? It's, a, it's also very class-specific um, criticism going on here. The bourgeois otaku, these kind of rich boys who have all this money in their house, they can come buy limited edition Gundam figures. But the guys on the street, the guys on the street who are just having a good time, not them. They're not, they're not good for business. Get them out of here. It's really the triumph of kind of a market logic, a triumph of capitalism in a way. But the otaku did not like it, sir. No, they did not like it. And I'm right there. I didn't like it either. <laughs> so we all got together, and we had a large demonstration on the 30th of June, a day I hope will live in infamy, but it won't. People won't remember. We all got together, three different groups, the otaku, the himote, and the moe otaku, right? The otaku, the moe, and the himote. I'm a moe otaku, personally. But I'm in there, I'm in the group, right? I'm all together with my brothers and sisters, shoulder to shoulder. We're singing songs, we're singing, you know, give me back my haruhi, let me free, let me be, that kind of thing. It was a crazy, crazy time. And about 500 people actually showed up to this demonstration. So this was actually one of the largest demonstrations in the past, like, 20 years in Japan. But the media completely ignored it, despite the fact that we put in uh, media requests to every major station, every major newspaper. They ignored it. The only one that did come, Singapore. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. They, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not because, it's not because they didn't know what was happening. They knew what was happening. They just ignored it. And so they